This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. If you watched my video from a week or two ago, it was on a cool pack unit that was down and you've seen how well I talked about it. Well, guess what? We're back at the same location on another unit that's not working correctly. This is a different cooler. As you can see, this is a true uh, keg cooler, beer cooler, wine cooler, whatever you want to call it. Not good, huh? So let's do a, exactly the same thing we did the last time. Let's go up here, make sure this coil's not packed full of crud, and see where our thermostat's at. So it looks like we're at 53, the green light is on. Coil don't look too bad. Obviously fans are running, so let's go up on the roof and see if it's uh, something similar or not. Well, at least it's some really crappy looking weather out here today. That unit right there is the one I worked on the last time. You can see where our little tubes and all of our little happiness, and it's actually labeled now. That's uh, still working. So let's go over here and look at this other unit and see what we can find out. Pressure's not starting. Well, let's check start components. So just coming down here, the top of the contactor, we've got 216 going between N and four, which N doesn't really stand for neutral because these are obviously 230 volt. Uh, we've got power coming into it. Nothing was coming out on three, clock is happy. So let's see what we got down here for power on the coil of the contactor. See if we got back contactor, no coil voltage. So the coil is fine. Now the only thing that would stop it would be our safety switches. So as far as contact, what I'll usually do is find the contactor. There it is right there, follow it back. It goes into a high pressure control, low pressure control. So there's your low pressure control. Uh, up, down, turn around, do, 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 do. boom, low pressure control. So, yep, yeah. well, what do we can do? Let's go ahead and see if we can get our gauge on there and see what the suction is. We may have a solenoid issue. Solenoid could be shut. So let's, we'll check suction and we'll check discharge. See if uh, discharge actually has pressure there. That'll tell us if the uh, refrigerant's actually in there or if we're empty or not. If you remember, I had a heck of a time getting in there. The yellow jacket fits a little bit better. Got zero PSI on it, so that's not good. This hunk of, hunk of clunk is 2016. Let's go ahead and see if we got anything on the high side. That's gonna tell us whether we're flat or not. Guess what? We have a catastrophic leak of some sort. How'd that happen? Where's that catastrophic leak at? Because here's the thing, we're before the solenoid. The solenoid's on the inside. We've, we're checking it coming off of the receiver. So we got an issue, bud. We got an issue. Hopefully this crappy weather don't break on us anytime soon. No guarantees on that though. Well, we're gonna have to grab some nitrogen. Probably give it a squirt of that and see if, uh, see what's going on. Who knows? When we add pressure to it though, it's gonna kick on. We don't really wanna be pumping nitrogen. I'd love to turn it off, but these switches here are obviously let, let loose. Uh, they ain't working very good. So we're gonna have to open that up so we can turn it off. Okay, and all that does, it just flips up and down. So they either probably didn't get it installed correctly. Who knows? But put it back on now there we go it turns it off probably just need to bend that outwards a little bit power went off so it'll keep it from running it's a good Hubble switch just this thing here has got some problems probably probably had that insulation pinned underneath there possibly hard to say all right so this time I brought up the uh, yellow jacket hoses they fit a little bit better so let's go ahead and pressurize maybe just the high side first and see if we drop down real quick. There we go. Not hearing anything yet. Let's see if it starts to drop right away. We've got to have a pretty good size leak for this stupid thing to, to leak that fast. And with the pressure switch. Let's go ahead and just juice her up and uh, kind of see where we can get it at. True Tech Tools now stocks yellow jacket hoses and stuff, so I'll probably be getting a set of those. These right here are my favorites. They're, uh, they're kind of expensive, but I've always liked these ones the best. We'll get the old spray out and see if we can find this thing. It's got to be a big leak. 
Got about 175, 160-ish area on it. Sprayed all these things that are most common, your filter dryer and your little pressure switches and all that, and the caps and all that, nothing there. I am going to say it's probably downstairs. That's where the majority of all the leaks are at anyway. Uh, usually in the evaporator coil or something vibrating down there. So let's go down there. I'm gonna set my bag underneath this eave here. You can tell it's a little drier. I know it's a good chance it may start raining. Last thing I want is my stuff getting all soaked. Well, did I call it? I can hear it and mom partially deaf. Yep, right in there. Let's take a peek. looking stuff up oh. up oh, there it is there it is look at that blow a hole right through it that looks like an electrical shock short probably all these dangly wires that they have ass laid in here we can just lay a lay a bead across that but yeah they let all these wires just dangle in here what do you expect's gonna happen you know Yep. Always am leery about when people do this kind of stuff. Whoa. You can see where it looks like it's been around. Okay, so we got the door back on. Like that. You can see right there's where it hit at. You're short. Now, the question is, is that on the load side? Yep, it was on the load side. So did it damage the thermostat? Guess we'll find out. Let's go ahead and prepare that. That little piece there would have stayed on there and been probably all right. That's probably not the greatest setup they had right there, huh? This would have shut off before it went to a negative. I don't feel like jacking around with filter dryers. So, one of those whistlers. Okay, we've got a blue crimp connector on there and then we taped this together so that it will help protect it as it's up against that. Honestly, we probably could bend this away from it because if you look at how that lines up, if you move the solenoid that really wasn't sized very well out of the way, that kind of goes right there. So we could just move this over. I don't know, once again, just like their suction line on the compressor that I talked about, they put this header here kind of like in the same way. So yeah, it's kind of in the way. Uh, might be able to bend it over just a touch, but either way, I gotta go up there and relieve the pressure on it, and then we'll go ahead and brace that shut. All right, I was able to bend this, rotate it here and here, which keeps most of that out of the way. Um, that is going to move it over quite a bit. Now it will not hit it, so we should be good there. I'll probably go ahead and tape some of these wires all together just to keep them in a nice tight bundle, less likely to eat into it. It's starting to rain again. So I'm gonna use that as my excuse not to change filter dryer. Normally you wanna change it every time. My out is claiming that because the pressure switch would have shut it down and would not have drawn it into a negative is why I'm not as worried about it. Now keep in mind that refrigerant leaked into this room and probably didn't go too far. So we're opening up the door and letting it air out just a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and get the torch ready to go and get this thing brazed up. Okay, got her a little clean. We'll shoot right around that. Burn that sticker off. Went right over top of it, nice, clean weld. That's not gonna go anywhere. All right, so we've got that wire tied to there. No more shaky shaky. We've got another wire tie here, no shaky shaky there. Taped it, taped it. It's not because I just covered up the, the, the break. I just am keeping it away from any vibration. Now I'm not taping obviously this sensor in place because chances are this control might be bad. Well, you know, it didn't blow the breakers. So, I mean, who knows? So we might've been underneath our maximums. They may stick on now, who knows? 
So let's go ahead and get this thing together and get up there and back this thing down. Okay, we was able to bend those prongs out and now it works. Look at that. You got green light. You don't have green light. You got green light again. So we got it on that way, since we're in a vacuum, we're able to get pulled on both sides in addition to what we're going through the, we're just breaking all the rules here, guys, honestly. Did on the last one, this weather sucks. I mean, it's been raining. Okay, so we started dumping liquid in. We got about 12 ounces, whatever. Suction's starting to slowly come up. So we are looping through, I mean, solenoid is calling. This holds supposedly nine or six ounces. We may just have enough. This bottle only weighed 13 total. Eh, probably not looking too happy. Just kicked on, shut off liquid, start uh, adding on suction slowly. Get this thing sucked in. You can tell I'm not using my usual Testo setup. Got the old CPS. So I just went in there and checked in between there because I couldn't see daylight very well through this. So we're gonna blast this thing out with the nitrogen I have left here. You can look in there, you can tell very little light coming through. You can also see it gets motor bearings probably start to go out soon. See the oil on the end of the motor. Right now we're at five pounds, eight ounces. This thing glass is solid, it's green. You can see the green versus yellow. Probably green, uh, probably solid because the unit is suction anyway comes in about 25 degrees that's why I don't really like analog all that great well we have to grab another bottle all right so we are finally solid went and grabbed another bottle got the extra 10 ounces in there because we ran out I think right at six run a little higher head pressure especially for cold out here as it is 225 so we're running a 95 almost 100 degrees so it's it's 54 degrees out right now so 64 74 84 94 104 yeah our head pressure is a little high let's see if we can uh, blow that out a little bit got the rule breaker here obviously a regulator is going to slow it down tremendously not safe really but you know youtube showed me how to do it so i know it has to be okay I always use it with a hose. It doesn't have an end on it. That way you're not tempted to be stupid. But we'll actually get crap out of this coil. Now, of course, you know, it's, it would be logical to put hoses up here. Brand new buildings, no, no hose bibs. Nope. Let's hit it. Here's we got a little bit out. Let's see if we can see through this thing now. I can. Let's see if it is from the other side, which is a little darker. Yeah, you can see we got some crap out of it. It's it's so powerful that you can literally bend over the fins. Yep. Look at that. Back a lot better than what it was. You won't get that with a regulator. But like I said, you gotta be stupid careful. I mean, I even screwed up the fins a little bit here. One little spot there and there. So, you know, it obviously straightened right back out. Not a big deal. But the head pressure should have dropped quite a bit. Look at that. Not even it. Looks like we're running about 175. Imagine that. Let's see where our sight glass is at now. Yeah, we're flashing off. Check that out. So we need to add a little bit more. Yep. That's why you can't trust the dirty coil. Can't charge these things with dirty coils. It's artificial head pressure. Artificial head pressure. And that control is not shutting off at even 80, 80 degrees. So, once again, why I don't like these controls, but if I was to go through and fix everything I don't like, we'd have a new store. 
So that should probably put us about where we need to be at. Yeah, it looks a little yellowish, but we'll watch out for a little bit, see how it does. So when we finally went solid, we were at seven pounds. And then, do the math, you do 10, 15 percent over that, be another pound. So we are at eight pounds, 10 ounces. That is not very accurate down there, seven pounds. Um, it's off by about a pound and a half. That's probably condenser charge only. It says it's good for 50 foot. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. Not feeling it. I should be a little more accurate now. Staying pretty solid. Head pressure still looking good, about 175, 180-ish. Suction. Right around 20 degrees, 22 degrees, 20, 23 degrees, somewhere up ballpark. Don't forget that cooler was pretty warm. So we're under a heavy load. All that beer, all that liquid, lots of mass that needs to be uh, cooled down. It looks like it's not raining now. It kind of backed off a little bit. Every time you're supposed to, every time you open the system, you're supposed to replace the dryer. And when you're making these videos, you know you're going to be scrutinized. So. So I was able to lower all that right down with the hook. And like I said, this is the one I showed you last time I was here. You basically pull up on the one, which allows it to trip and release, and the other one just lifts it up. And then you wanna use a, a heavier turnbuckle there, or whatever, that way it's like the wind doesn't blow it around as much, but that made it a lot easier to get the stuff on the ground. Oh, that looks a little bit better. Not bad. Sure. How longer it's been running. Okay, now what we gotta make sure of here is that this thermostat works. Let's go up here and see if we can turn it down. Off at 29, on at 37. All right, let me do some tweaking. All right, so I went in there and changed the temperature to 40 something and it shut off. So now we're gonna switch it back to 29 that's where they had it at i'm not going to screw with it 29 will be on 37 actually on okay here we go so look remember how this goes there last time i didn't really know what i was doing so off temperature is going to be 29 on is going to be 37. heck of a swing i'll tell you whatever so yeah they're just shoving it down nice and tight but that's back to it and that uh solenoid slam shut all right, guys, so we're gonna wrap this thing up here. You know, normally I would say you need to replace the filter dryer. The weather was unpredictable. I didn't know if it was gonna rain or what was going on. So it should have been done. But like I said, with that little hole up there, it's when the unit shut off, it would have went to neutral pressure, zero. No, nothing pushing into it. So in theory, it should have stayed dry. That's my theory, you know, yeah, it should have been replaced. But I squeezed this call in on the front of the other one that I needed to do beforehand. So I really don't have all day to screw around with this one. And the sight glass kind of tells us where we're at. Yeah, is it as accurate as all this other stuff? Did I pull a micron gauge? Did I get out the big blue hoses? Well, we already talked about why the straighter core removal tool doesn't fit for squat in there. And there's all kinds of things you could do. And I could spend probably five hours, six hours here if I wanted to do things, you know, perfect to the T. But we went in and nailed it out fast and easy. We made sure that the condenser coil is clean, made sure the sight glass is full, made sure it was green. Make sure we added the winter charge to it by adding the extra 10 15 percent verified the thermostat wasn't damaged when it shorted into the copper wire made a uh, made adjustments so the wire wouldn't actually trip in so made adjustments to the wire so that it wouldn't happen again that's about all you can do you know you can only foresee so many things so i appreciate you guys watching it i'm gonna call this week not a lot of exciting things going on once again it's a friday and i hadn't recorded nothing all week you know until summer starts to actually hit not a lot's going on so I appreciate you guys uh, subscribing and then following and sharing and comments and all that stuff. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.